Okay, I think we're now live. So welcome everybody to today's licensing committee uh, to consider the application for a premises license uh, for Rocker at Harbour Parade Landscape. My name is James Flatsman and I am going to facilitate the uh, beginning of the meeting, which is the election of the chair. Uh, so please can have a nomination. Councillor Boundary. Thank you very much, Councillor Scobie. And do you second that, Councillor Lara? Yes, I'll second that, thank you. Lovely. Okay, then without further ado, I'll hand over to Councillor Bambridge as Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, welcome everyone to today's meeting of the Licensing Subcommittee. Prior to this meeting, all participants have previously checked that they can be heard and seen and can see and hear other members. To double check this and to introduce everyone who is present at this remote meeting, I would kindly ask that you confirm your attendance and your role or job title when I say your name. Ms Brock. Yes, uh, Alison Brock, Licensing Officer. Councillor Scobie. Harry Scobie, Councillor for Cliftonville West. Councillor Arra. Councillor Roshanara, no, Councillor for Central Harbour Ramsgate. Um, Ms Phillips. Jennifer Phillips, Principal Litigation Lawyer for Thanet District Council. Mr Clapson. James Clapson, Democratic Services Officer, clerk in the meeting. Ms Berry. Amanda Berry, Environmental Health Officer. Mr Gregg. It was you. Oh, sorry. Michelle Gregg, Police Licensing Officer for Thanet. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Grimsley. Hello, Andy Grimsley, Solicitor for the Applicant. Thank you. Um, Ms. Brewer. Hello, Democratic Services Officer, streaming um, on YouTube. Um, Paul Diment. Yes, Paul Diamond, Licensing Coordinator, East Division. Mark Beresford. You're going to say he can't. Yeah, unfortunately, he can't join this meeting, but he's watching. Okay, thank you. Um, Heidi Collins. Good morning, Sergeant Heidi Collins, the Thanet Community Safety Unit. And Mr. Pantelli. Nicholas Pantelli, the applicant for Rock Island Ramsey. Okay, thank you, everyone. Have I missed anyone present today? No? Okay, we can If you have any technical difficulties during the meeting, then please contact Katie, the Democratic Services Officer, on call, who will attempt to assist you on 01843. Sorry, one second, yeah. uh, Alison, could you mute your microphone for me? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Sorry, so if you have any technical difficulties, please contact the Democratic Services Officer on call. We will attempt to assist you on 01843 She She'll put um, her phone number in the chat function. Thank you, Katie. Um, I would ask participants, when you're not speaking, to please mute your microphone. This minimises background noise and will help everyone in listening to the proceedings. Microphones must only be on if the participant has been granted permission to speak. To gain my permission to speak, please very briefly indicate on the chat to the right side of the screen and I will then make a note and go back to you once the person speaking has finished. Would everyone present please ensure that their mobile phones are turned to silent and that they are not used to make or receive phone calls whilst the meeting is in progress. Do not turn off your phones in case you need to be contacted in the event of technical difficulties. Please also refrain from checking emails or conducting other business and ensure that you're in a quiet room, free from distractions for the duration of the meeting. Please note this meeting is being live streamed for members of the public, except for the, the private deliberation part of this meeting. A separate private hangout meeting will take place for this element of item four, and the public meeting will resume in its previous digital, digital location 30 minutes later. Unless there is a reason to suggest an earlier or later time, no unauthorised recording of the confidential item of business is permitted to take place. Are there any apologies for absence? No apologies. Um, are there any declarations of interest? No declarations. Um, okay, application for premises license, um, Rocker. 
I call upon Ms Phillips, the Council's Principal Litigation Solicitor, to explain to the parties the procedure that we will be taking during the hearing. Good morning and thank you. I would like everyone present to know that the decisions made by this subcommittee are made in accordance with the Licensing Act 2003 and based on the information present, presented in this agenda, together with any verbal submissions made today. Decisions of the subcommittee are not politically based. Um, this subcommittee will act impartially and offer a fair and unbiased hearing of today's application and will give um, fair consideration to the evidence heard and read today. We are here to consider the application of Rocca Limited of 64 Harbour Parade, Ramsgate, Kent, CT 11 8LN for a new premises licence in respect of the same address, which is 64 Harbour Parade, Ramsgate, Kent, CT 11 8LN under Section 11 of the Licence in Act 2003 for the premises described um, in the application um, dated the 22nd of uh, December 2020. Uh, the application being made to Thanet District Council as the relevant licensing authority in accordance with Section 12 of the Licensing Act. The premises um, does have a license um, which permits the sale of alcohol seven days a week until three o'clock um, with a close of 3.30 and the license is in the name of Mr Nicholas Pantelli um, but this application is for a new license. We will hear the parties in the following order, the licensing officer, then the applicant for the license and any representatives um, from the police and then from the environmental health officer. Each party has up to 15 minutes to make its, rep its presentation and this includes any witness that's called. Um, you will not be allowed to introduce any new evidence at this stage um, that has not been disclosed in this proceeding. I will have to interrupt if there is any attempt to do so. Um, you are not expected nor required to talk for the full 15 minutes. Um, for presentation, the members of the subcommittee may ask questions of each party or their rep representative and of any witnesses. There is no time limit for members' questions and there is no automatic right for the parties to question one another except with permission. And if questions are allowed, um, they would be limited to around five minutes. Um, at the end of the proceedings, each party will have five minutes to make a closing statement in the following order. The applicant for the license, any representatives, the police um, will sum up and then the environmental health officer. And please note that to ensure that the virtual meeting runs smoothly, only one individual shall be allowed to speak at a time and any person speaking must be permitted to finish um, what they are saying without interruption. Um, the meeting will then adjourn, as has been stated earlier, for the committee to consider its decision. And when we do adjourn, the subcommittee members, the legal officer and the clerk shall leave the virtual meeting. And if you would like to hear the decision of the subcommittee, as was stated, um, we'll advise everyone of the, de the decision um, approximately 30 minutes from the time of the adjournment. You can either remain in the virtual meeting due this time or you can use the link again to access the meeting. If you do decide to wait in the virtual meeting room, please turn off your cameras and microphones to ensure your privacy as the recording will continue. And there concludes my input for now. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Um, I would like to stress the importance of following the hearing procedure and that there will be an opportunity for parties to make a final presentation after questioning. Therefore, I would advise all present to please follow the procedure and to respect those speaking by not interrupting or speaking over others. If people do interrupt or speak over others, I as chairman will be asking them to refrain from doing so. If they continue to do so, as my warning, then that individual could face being asked to leave the meeting. So, um, could the licensing officer please present the report? Morning, everyone. Um, an application has been made by Rocker Limited for a new premises license at Rocker Harbour Parade Ramsgate. The applicant currently holds a license for this premises and has submitted this application as a new one 
to increase opening hours and hours of licensable activities. Should this application not be approved, the applicant can revert back to the current license that's already in place. At Annex 2, you'll find a chart which gives you the current licensing hours and the requested new hours. One representation has been received from the police, which is also attached to Annex 3. Environmental Health have not objective, but objected, should I say, but have requested that should be granted, the conditions which have been included within the application are attached as part of the licence. The, the applicant has submitted supporting statements in reply to the objection from the police, and this can also be found at Annex 5. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, thank you, Alison. Um, would the applicant um, agent please present their application? Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, yes, as I said, I'm Andy Grimsey, the solicitor for the applicant. In a moment, I'm going to ask Nick Pantelli to, uh, to address you. Uh, you may be, well, I'm sure you are aware that there was some documentation, a further um, uh, representation, if you like, um, submitted by the police yesterday. And there's a couple of things arising from that that we'd like to address you on if, if, if that's uh, acceptable. Um, I, I just, Nick is going to be quite comprehensive in what he says. Uh, and I just want to frame what he says uh, in this context, please. The relationship with the police is very good. Nick is a very uh, long-standing operator and uh, uh, I hope you can see from the correspondence from the police that there is a lot of mutual respect there. This case may, your decision may come down to the degree of trust that you are prepared to put in Nick as an operator rather than the temptation to write everything down on a license as a, as a condition. It, it, that may be the question. It, it, if that is something that is live with you, I would just point to the statement that is at page 53 of the bundle and what Nick is about to tell you uh, uh, as a sort of uh, um, further information uh, to show that there can't be a better person in whom to place your trust than somebody like Nick Pantelli. Uh, he is a long-standing operator. If you look at the detail of that statement, you will see how much diligence he has, he has put into trying to address any concerns that there may be and to base what we are asking for on, on evidence. Yes, we know that we will have, if this is granted, uh, the, the latest operating hours in Ramsgate. But I would suggest that, particularly in light of the COVID pandemic and the devastating effect it's had on all licensed premises, Nick included, if trust is one of those things that you are um, uh, is affecting your decision today, Nick is the man that you can trust to do it. And when the police have mentioned a fear of the floodgates being opened, uh, I have submitted a, a, a case, which I trust has been forwarded to your uh, solicitor, uh, which basically says, that, thank you, um, Jennifer is nodding. Uh, basically, the guidance says that every case should be treated on its own merits. And therefore, we would ask you to treat Nick's case, our case, on its own merits. And if anybody else in the future wants to apply, then of course, that is up to them. And you will decide based upon their merits or otherwise. If you don't mind, Chair, I know we're limited with time. I'm going to ask Nick to uh, address you now. Uh, Nick, are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Thanks, Andy. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you would have heard from, from Andy and from Jennifer, we've, um, we already have a 3 a.m. license seven days a week since 2006, and we have used temporary event notices each year for an extra hour trading mainly on bank holidays and on other special events throughout the year. We would estimate that we have run well over 200 TENS notices until 4 a.m. at the premises. So we are very experienced in doing so. With this application, we are seeking an extra hour from Thursday to Saturday on our license, which will allow us to operate with a lot more flexibility than the temporary events notices currently allow. I would, however, like to reassure the subcommittee and the police that it is certainly not my intention to trade every single Thursday, Friday and Saturday night 
throughout the year until 4 a.m. And if the license is granted, it would be used sensibly, much in the same manner as our temporary event notices have been in the past on bank holiday special events and during our peak season. There are no conditions on our existing premises license other than those previously agreed with environmental health in 2010. Despite this, for over 15 years, we have operated responsibly, well in excess of the requirements of our license with measure, measures which include CCTV, door supervisors, body worn cameras, metal detectors, UV lights, spike test kits, and most recently, an IB scanner. We have been in discussions with the police regarding the application and had agreed 15 conditions which were proportionate to promote the licensing objectives. These were included in the application and we proceeded on that basis having consulted with each responsible authority. The original police objection in the hearing documents asked for three further conditions which I would like to touch on. The first is a last entry at 1 a.m and re-entry at 2 a.m. This is something I feel very strongly about. We do not have a last entry in our existing 3 a.m. license, nor have we ever been asked to impose any such restriction on any of the temporary event notices we have previously held over the last 15 years. There is no last entry for any other venue along Harbour Parade with 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. opening hours, nor premises in Thanet with 6 a.m. licenses. So this would place us in a totally disadvantageous position with a huge financial downside. Pre-COVID, on average, 80% of our customers would arrive after 1 a.m. on a Thursday and around 50% arrive after 1 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. In terms of revenue, this equates to around 86% on Thursdays, 80% on Fridays and 66% on Saturdays. Hence, any last entry would be extremely detrimental to the business. It would prevent people from coming to us from other premises, not only in Ramsgate and other towns in Thanet, but also further afield. And with the prospect of vastly increased staycations looming over us due to the travel restrictions in place, we should be encouraging and promoting tourism in all of our towns across Thanet now more than ever. And finally, it is just not necessary to promote the licensing objectives. Our entry policy is robust and any refusals are just as likely to take place at 10 p.m. as they are at 2 or 3 a.m. The second condition suggested was to bring tables and chairs inside after 2 a.m. Again, no other venue has such a condition and there is little rationale for it. We have been licensed by Kent Highways for temporary street furniture during our opening hours for 15 years. And in my experience, people sat down and comfortable are far less likely to cause antisocial behavior. This would also be totally impractical in terms of physically being able to remove tables and chairs at 2 a.m. and would cause issues with where to store them when the premises were open and still trading. Not to mention the condition is against government COVID guidance which encourages venues to maximise the use of outdoor space where possible. The last condition suggested by the police were those uh, proposed by Environmental Health, which were already included in the application. Uh, following the additional submission by the police yesterday, I'm pleased that the police are satisfied that these have now been suitably addressed and that they are no longer seeking these particularly onerous conditions. The police also provided an incident log from August 2019 to February 2020, which I have commented on in detail. Um, however, to summarise, there are 17 incidents in total, nine of which did not occur at the venue. Three are highly questionable and there are only five confirmed at the venue. Of those five, three were allegations made towards door staff none of which were followed up and none of which supported a prosecution. This leaves just two actual incidents, which is of course two more than we would like. Critically, there have been no incidents at the venue past 3 a.m. and on any temporary events notices we have held over the years. There has been no objection from uh, environmental health 
Uh, however, I would like to address the comments in the hearing packs that there are no clouds left hanging over us. Um, it points to two complaints received, uh, the first of which was on September the 14th. Uh, which I wrote to Miss Berry asking for more detail on to uh, investigate and take any remedial action if it was required, but I heard nothing back. Um, I was skeptical of this complaint as in September we were operating under strict tiered COVID regulations, uh, which included everyone had to be seated and the music level could only be played at a background level. And I was working on the night in question. So I said that one. You know, I don't know where to go with it. Um, EHO also mentioned another complaint on the 22nd of January 2020, which was not brought to our attention until I received the hearing pack. Um, however, you know, once I've looked into this, um, it's clear that this was a Wednesday night in January. And given the fact that we only open Thursday to Saturday out of season, we were quite simply not open. So, again, this is either frivolous or, or perhaps attributable to other venues which may have been open. There have been some discussions behind the scenes with police which have been conducted in good faith by both parties to try and reach an agreement prior to the hearing and the main sticking point is in relation to door staff. We have never had a license condition requiring us to even have door staff at the venue but we have always used door supervisors for the last 15 years and it is, of course, a sensible measure to have in place. We have previously agreed with the police that during our peak season, from Easter bank holiday to the August bank holiday inclusive, on Fridays and Saturdays, that there should be a minimum of one SIA from 10 p.m. and a further one SIA from 11 p.m. until the premises closes. At all other times, the need for door staff shall be risk assessed and cognizance will be taken of police advice. A site visit by the subcommittee under normal circumstances would have been useful to see the size and the shape of the premises. There was a plan submitted which uh, may assist, but we are not a large premises by any means. We are approximately 18 metres long by 6 metres wide and the shape of the venue is a big rectangle. Um, that means that there are very good lines of sight from one end of the venue to the other including the outdoor areas. There is also a CCTV monitor at the front door, which enables door staff to check other areas at all times. And all our staff uh, are on uh, radio, two-way radios, so we can, can communicate with each other throughout the premises. We have a risk assessment in place for door staff, and we follow this every weekend when we are planning the number of door staff and the start times to ensure the premises is run responsibly and safely whilst promoting the licensing objectives. These decisions are taken by management and our head doorman and input is always welcome from the police. We take many factors into account, such as how busy the night is expected to be, identifying peak periods, any special risks associated with a particular night or weekend. Consideration is given to the time of year current trends, weather conditions, and any specific nature of the events being held at the premises or externally that may impact on footfall or customer arrival times so that we can minimize any risk. Additional security measures are put in place for historically busy events such as Halloween, the run up to Christmas throughout December and New Year's Eve, for example. Uh, the door staff on Ramsgate Seafront all work for the same security contractor, Mark One Security. They are all in communication with each other, with uh, radios throughout the night and share information to prevent crime and disorder. They can and often do support each other at other venues should the need arise. In 2019, the last full year of trading, our door staff assisted other venues and the police on 72 occasions throughout the year. On only one occasion were other door staff called to our premises and that was purely for monitoring to ensure an incident was properly recorded on body worn camera. In short, our door team is very experienced and can look after our venue and we have always provided much more support 
and assistance to other door staff and other venues than we have ever received. I can assure you that a Friday night in January or February is very different from a Friday night in July or August. Right, Nicholas, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just letting you know that you're coming towards the end of your time now. Yeah, I'll, I'll close up, I'll close up. Uh, we're a very seasonal business. We need to be able to adjust our staff levels accordingly, as we do with our bartenders and our glass collectors, and to keep our operating costs in line with our revenue throughout the year. Um, just to give you an idea, in 2019, we spent over £36,500 on security at the premises. Uh, what the police are asking for would push this figure to over £50,000, which is a huge increase in expenditure at any time, let alone in the current climate. And in my opinion, it's not necessary when we have demonstrated for many years that we are very proactive on this front. Our proposed condition for door staff is fair and appropriate for the size of venue. And hopefully the fact that we have used door staff regularly for 15 years and never been caught short will assure you that I would never leave my venue understaffed in any capacity, let alone with door staff. OK, th thank you. Um, does the licensing team have any que questions for the applicant? Um, yeah, well, one's question, one's comment, really. Um, just you don't actually have a current pavement license, so you will need to apply for one before you open. And also, could you explain to the committee why you've put this in as a new premises application and not as a variation, which is often what most people do? Thank you. Um, I, I will answer that, uh, if that's OK, Chair, uh, the, the, the latter question. Um, being a licensing solicitor of 17 years experience, uh, uh, we have sometimes come across um, uh, applications when we've issued variations of licenses and things have cropped up where um, it hasn't turned out how we hoped the application has turned out and we've come away with something which was worse than what our client wanted in the first place because of the nature of conditions that can be put on licenses. We regularly advise our clients across the country if they are applying for something that may be contentious it might be easier and clearer to apply for a new license so that everybody knows, the councillors, the authorities, everybody knows this will be the new license. Uh, if it's granted on terms which uh, our client is, uh, is happy with, we will then adopt that license and surrender the old one. If it, if it goes badly wrong uh, and we get a license we don't like, we just we tear it up, quite frankly. So it is a commercial risk-based strategy. There's nothing, there's no... Um, chicanery uh, behind the scenes about it. It's a, it's a regular practice for, for specialist licensing solicitors, in my experience anyway. It certainly doesn't reflect on, on Nick in any way at all. I don't know whether Alison can confirm that, but uh, that's the position. Um, Alison, can I just touch on the, the pavement license? Yeah, we normally apply to Kent Highways. We applied last year. Our check and application was returned. We're aware that Thanet Council are now responsible for pavement licences and before we reopen, we will of course submit the paperwork that you need and the fee uh, to process that application for us. Lovely, thank you. That's great, thank you Alison. Um, do the police have any questions for the applicant? Yes, I do. Um, I just have two questions. Um, one being, what is the rationale and reason for not employing extra door staff to cover these extra hours as recommended by the SIA authority? That's the first question. My second question is, what control measures will be introduced if Mr Pantelli doesn't agree to the police condition requiring two SIA, SIA door staff from 2300 hours, an additional one from 0100 hours? For example, if an incident incurs inside the premises, requiring two door staff, that would mean that the front entrance of Rocker will be unattended and no security measures there. So they're my two questions for Mr Pantelli. In, in oh, sorry. sorry, there's some feedback. Yeah, turn that off. That's not me, sorry. Um, I, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not quite... 
comfortable with this um, reference by from uh, Michelle to uh, the SIA guidance. Uh, I, I don't I don't quite know what um, the police are saying is the guidance, and I don't know what the provenance is. I certainly know, and having spoken with several colleagues who are as experienced as me in, in licensing matters, that there isn't any specific guidance. You know, it's very much like applications. One has to uh, um, address particular risk situations uh, with with the appropriate amount of door staff. Uh, it's not based necessarily on capacity or on time or size or or, or whatever. It's a it's a holistic approach. So um, before Nick answers, I, I, I think it might help everybody if if Michelle could perhaps clarify what she is saying the guidance is uh, and perhaps the justification for it. If you don't mind, Michelle, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, after speaking to some SIA uh, door staff um, managers, they are saying that the ratio is one door staff to 75 patrons. That is what they are looking at when they have premises, licensed premises. So with regards to Mr Pantelli maybe having a 200 capacity, we've looked at one door staff to 75 patrons, which would be two door staff to 150. Rocker is 200, so we are asking for that third door staff to cover the patrons inside the premises. Yes, um, it's guidance only, but for the protection of the people inside the premises and the door staff, that is what we're asking. Yeah. Um, one speaker. Nick, you're on mute. You're on mute. Appreciate it again. Yeah, just, just to reiterate what Andy said, the SIA is a regulatory body and does not specify or recommend the number of door staff at venues nor their start finishing times. We've operated the venue for 15 years. Uh, we generally find that one doorman inside and one doorman outside is adequate to manage the venue. There are multiple venues around us which we can call on for assistance should we need assistance, um, which is very rare. Um, and in terms of control measures, if door staff are tied up, a member of management or a member of our staff will monitor the front door and will simply hold the front door and not allow anyone to enter until incidents are dealt with and everyone is safe and sound. Well, I think. Thank you, um, Nick. You, you mentioned um, getting other door staff to assist. Um, that's not really good practice for door staff to assist other premises. But at three o'clock in the morning, when all the other premises in Ramsgate will be shut, you will only have your two door staff on that harbour front. So you can't ask for assistance from other door staff at three o'clock in the morning when your premises will be open till half past four. Hence why we're asking for that extra security for not only your door staff, but the patrons inside um, for their safety. Thank you. Yeah, if you know, we risk assess our events and if it falls on a bank holiday or a special event or expect to be busy, we will of course bolster up our security as we have done on any every occasion for the last 15 years and during any temporary events that we have run as well. So we, we know how to handle our premises. You know, if it gets to the point where we're busy, we will just simply stop letting people in. Uh, we were the only premises trading from 11 o'clock um, over the summer uh, in the whole of Thanet. Uh, and we had no issue with our two doormen, you know, dealing with the premises, supported by our management and other members of staff. Thank you. Um, does the environmental health officer have any questions for the applicant? Good morning. Uh, yes, just to, just to uh, thanks to Nick for clarifying uh, the issues around the complaints we'd received. Um, we did write to you. Um, uh, it appears you didn't receive the second notification, but also I didn't receive your response. So, um, but thank you for clarifying that. Uh, the questions I have: one is in relation to temporary events notice notices that, as you say, you've applied for over two hundred probably over the last few years um, to um, obtain that extra hour of trading to take you to um, 
four o'clock for regulated entertainment and 4.30 closure, which is what you're seeking to achieve with this app, this new application. Um, I suppose I want to know is if, if this license is granted, are you going to submit further applications and extend the hours to five and 5.30 respectively? So if you could clarify that. And then the second point would be um, in relation to noise control measures at the venue. Um, obviously, um, since 2010, which is when we last had issues around noise and ultimately a review and conditions imposed, um, I just wanted to know, because we set the limiter at that time, whether you have undertaken any additional noise control measures. So, for example, secondary acoustic glazing, a, a lobby door, um, soundproofing to walls, that kind of thing, or if it's in the same sort of situation as it was back when we set the limiter in 2010. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll address both of those, Amanda. Um, no, we're not going to be seeking any later hours than four o'clock. Um, it is not my intention to trade past four o'clock, you know, on any event um, throughout the year. We haven't done in the past and I don't intend to in the future. Uh, and regard to uh, noise control measures, um, we have a limiter in place. It's regularly checked uh, by our sound engineer to ensure it's working at the right levels. Um, the front windows have been double glazed, um, which may be an additional improvement. Uh, we haven't done a, a, um, a noise, uh, you know, an updated sound test on it, but it, it could only be an improvement um, to what we've had previously. But we haven't had, we have not had a complaint since 2010. So I'll, I'll submit that you know what we have in place works, is working, and will continue to work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do members of the committee have any questions for the applicant? Councillor Scobie, um, Councillor Arra, um, if you want to unmute your microphone, Councillor Arra. Councillor Arra, do you have a question? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, to Mr. Pantelli, uh, are you thinking of uh, offering some special offers due throughout the week or any evenings? Uh, like, you know, Ramsgate is known for uh, thirsty Thursdays or, you know, cheap drinks. So are you planning to do something like this during the week? Thank no, you. that is not our intention and that's not our market. Um, you know, we, we, we do not want to go down that route. I mean, our, our standard price for a drink is about £4.80. And you can get a pint of beer in Weatherspoons for one twenty-five. So we are complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Thank you. I've got a question. Um, I noted that you said on the last entry um, it had been um, the, a condition had been put in place. Um, but also, uh, also um, the chairs being removed from the forecourt at um, two p.m. Is that in your previous um, license? Um, no, neither of those are in our previous license. Um, they, they were what were they were points raised by the police on their original uh, representation, um, but neither of those are on our current license or on any temporary event notice that we have operated in the past. Okay, all right, thank you. And um, and sorry, I, I didn't. And sorry again to um, Nicholas Pantelli. Um, could you just so, so clarify um, the question that we had regarding um, your? I take it the the, the, the neighbouring um, um, pubs and restaurants close at three o'clock. Is that right? Three thirty? Yes, yeah, some of them have three o'clock. Some of them have four o'clock licences as well. Okay, so so um, how is it that you're anticipating to cover that when you when you said about the um, um, getting um, other other doormen to help if there was you know an incident? Um, I've just said that, that option, you know, is, is available to us. Um, we, we generally find that you know, our two doormen who are very experienced, you know, over 10 years experience um, in SIA and you know, our head doorman has a military background um, that, you know, our, we have not had issues operating until four o'clock in the morning. Now, on, on many of the occasions when we will, will propose to be operating until four in the morning, Many of our neighbours, other bars, also put in temporary events. You know, Miss um, Berry can confirm that. The police can confirm that. 
So on many of these occasions, on the bank holidays, on your Easter's, or, you know, throughout the summer, New Year's Eve, there will be other places open until four o'clock. So I think that the police's concern on that is a little bit exaggerated. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, but it's um, the police. Um, if the police would like to present their case. Good morning. Um, we have been negotiating with Mr. Pantelli since January 2020. Now, as we were looking to take Rocker to review due to the amount of incidents involving his premises. These were discussed with him and a number of conditions were agreed by both parties. Um, these are listed in the supplemental amended police representations that were sent to the committee yesterday afternoon. The police have been waiting for a minor variation in order to add these conditions to the current premise license. On the 23rd of December 2020, we received an application for a new premise license, not a minor variation. Within it were the listed conditions as previously agreed. However, this included an extension to trading hours, which were not previously discussed during the first negotiations. New trading hours applied for are the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, closing times at 0430 hours. Within that, there was a request to trade until 0400 with certain celebratory days, i.e. Valentine's, Halloween and all bank holidays and Sunday preceding bank holidays. Also, Mr. Pantelli has requested for his premises to stay open all night on New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. Basically trading all night. Due to the increased hours and New Year's Eve, the police and the lack of door staff, we had no choice but to object to this application to give us more time to negotiate with Mr. Pantelli and come to an agreement that works both for us and Mr. Pantelli and the promotion of the licensing objective, prevention of the chronic disorder and public safety. Unfortunately, we were still negotiating up until the 11th hour and we have been able to reach an acceptable agreement on the main condition relating to door staff. All of the following conditions that the police objected to were conceded and we agreed, apart from the door staff um, condition. Um, and that is that we are asking for two SIA door staff um, to be working at Rocker from 2300 hours with an additional member of door staff from 0100 hours. We believe this is the least amount of door staff to manage a capacity of 200 patrons with regards to the SIA guidance. We believe that the hours between 2300 and 0430 are key and in the application as it stands there aren't enough suitable measures taken to uphold the licensing objectives. Currently, there are a significant number of venues that accommodate persons enjoying the night time economy in Ramsgate into the early hours. And it is entirely likely that many of these persons will decide to take advantage of a venue offering a significantly later opening than the other venues. It is also entirely likely that the influx of patrons from other licensed premises in Ramsgate will attend Rocker to take advantage of the 0430 closing time. At this, this influx of patrons will not just happen from 0300 hours. Instead, many will want to attend several hours before to make the most of to make the most of the evening. As such, there needs to be reasonable safety measures taken by the applicant to help keep both the patrons inside the premises and those potential patrons outside who want to gain entry, staff, and other members of the public safe. The police are not there to supplement the lack of door staff, but will attend when matters rise to prevent crime disorder. But having three door staff on will definitely provide an active deterrent to potential troublemakers and could prevent incidents in the first place. Um, we should the premise license be granted, Kent Police asks that the above points and conditions be considered by the committee as suitable amendments. We only concede on the other points if Mr. Pantelli agrees the door staff condition, um, but we have no, if, if he doesn't, we have no um, choice but to object to this, to this license. Um, with regards to the door staff, um, door staff, from what I understand, um, work on their own premises. Um, tell me if I'm incorrect, if anyone knows better than, better than me, because I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that door staff are insured to work on certain premises whilst they're there. So if they move off a premise to assist another premise, surely then they become in, uninsured and that shouldn't be happening. 
So when door staff are employed, they should only be working for that licensed premises, not to assist other door staff if they are in trouble. Um, so they would become uninsured and in fact, probably breaching their conditions if a premise license has a condition for those door staff to be there. Um, and I think that's about it. Sorry, I'm just going to ask my colleagues. Yeah. Um, also to mention, licensing objectives have to be prioritised over trust in an individual to ensure the safety of the public and prevent crime disorder. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> mute again. Does the applicant um, or agent have any questions um, for the police? Um, I, I've just got one, Chair. If, uh, and Michelle, forgive me if I misunderstood what you said, but perhaps you can clarify. Am I right in, in you saying that in the meetings before Christmas, no mention was made of the four o'clock license? Because I distinctly remember raising it at the end of our meeting with you and Heidi, and I didn't want the committee to think that we had not mentioned it at all, because I... Yes, it was mentioned um, prior to your application, um, but I'm talking about when the negotiations started in January 2020, there was no mention of the 0400 hour closing and trade and uh, 0430 hours closing. Thank you. Uh, could, can I ask a question? Um, yes, I've, I've got it. In, obviously, Andy's touched on it, but I've got it in my meeting notes on the on the 25th of November that we discussed um, four o'clock opening hours. Um, my question uh, to you, um, PC Greg, is that you know you're aware of our capacity. Does our capacity change after three o'clock in the morning? It, it's it's exactly the same. Um, no, your capacity doesn't change, but what does change, um, Mr Pantelli, is that you won't have the assistance from other door staff if there are any incidents occur inside your premises or outside the front. That's what you won't have, um, because that's what you've already stated to us, that you rely sometimes on other door staff to assist you. No, no, no. In this the, point, the, point, the point I raised in my statement was in, in 2019, we assisted other venues and other door staff on 72 occasions and the police. So are, are you now saying that our door staff should not assist other venues or the police in situations outside the premises? Because that's a very dangerous line for us to, you know, to be on. If you're saying we should stand off uh, and not get involved with, with things where, where the door staff can step in and prevent people getting hurt and injured, then, you know, that's a very, very risky position to put up in. No, that's not what I'm saying. Obviously, your door staff are there to protect your patrons outside your premises and inside, purely your premises. So the door staff next door to the other license, they are to look after their premises. That's what I'm saying. You can't rely on other door staff to assist rocker if an incident occurs um, and there's no way the police would suggest to not to uh, have public safety at the forefront thank you um, i think uh, as i stated it's us that provide the assistance to other venues not the other way around uh, my final question for you is that on the 17 incidents that you mentioned in your statement um, on only two of them were CCTV or body cam footage requested by the police. So we have body cam footage on both our doormen. We have CCTV available at the premises. Why on 15 of those 17 occasions did the police not fully investigate those incidents? Because in my opinion, if they had it done, many of them would not have made it to your list. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pantelli. Unfortunately, um, that's not up for discussion. Um, we're discussing your conditions um, and the objection, so um, it's, that's not up for discussion. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
does does environmental health um have any questions for the police no questions no questions do members of the committee have any questions for the police councillor ara yes um I know that Mr. Pantali said that no incident has been taken inside Raqqa, but uh, once uh, they close or other premises closes uh, in Harbour Parade, all the incident actually takes place in Harbour Street. Are you aware of this? And do you actually, when you close the, the premises, uh, your customers, do you actually, uh, in, I know you are not allowed to sort of, you know, tell them where to go, but do you ever, um, uh, in your mind, do you do you think what they are going to be up to, you know, after after they come out of your premises and you are closed? And often I heard that after closing hours, after I, either uh, you know after three o'clock or four four o'clock in the in the morning, you still have people inside the premises. I have heard this uh, from you know local community and the residents uh, who live uh, close to the Harbour Parade. So how are you going to tackle all this problem? I mean, there is always a problem in Harbour Street where we have a taxi stand uh, uh, next to, in the middle of the street. So all the customers who are closing are coming towards the taxi stand. Either they're going towards the station or coming for a taxi or they're congregating in Harbour Street and making you know, huge problem for the uh, for the residents. I think police are aware of this. It's always been happening for the last few years. So how, how are we going to tackle this problem? Thank you. Uh, hi, councillor. Okay, Sorry, so- this question should be directed at the police. Councillor Arrow. I think it, it goes to both, uh, bo both uh, the police uh, as well as Mr. Pantelli, because I don't think we have enough policing uh, to tackle the problem that, that that's causing you know the uh, problems in her in in Ramsgate itself it's been a huge huge problem for Ramsgate for the last few years I live in the center of uh, in the town and I'm aware of everything thank you is, is it, sorry the police can answer this question our apologies um Yes, Councillor, we are aware of the ongoing issues um, in Ramsgate and we are happy to, to discuss this um, after this hearing. Thank you. Councillor Scobie, do you have a question for the police? Okay. Um, I've, I've got a question. Um, I'm just looking at your SIA guidance and you're saying it's one, one door staff per 75 patrons, is that right? Yes, that's correct. And, and does that and does that add up to the number of patrons um, that will be in Rocca? Um, from my understanding, correct me, Mr. Pantelli, if I'm wrong, but um, Rocca has a capacity of 200. So the two door staff would go up to 150. So obviously, we need that extra door staff to for the extra patrons, the extra 50 patrons. But are the other are the requirements for the whole evening? Um, three three door staff or two and a half door staff or or is the requirement just from we try to negotiate eleven o'clock. Yeah, we've we've tried to negotiate, but we're asking that extra door staff from O one hundred hours, as I believe the capacity at Rocker um gets isn't as great. So from what I understand, come one o'clock, uh, a lot of his new business comes then um into three o'clock in the morning. So we're asking for that extra security for those few hours. If the license gets granted till four, half four, then we're only asking for one one more SIA. Okay, and so one more question. Um, it, it's, I think I heard someone say that this is, it, this is going to be the latest license, is it, in uh, along that area of Ramsgate, or is there somewhere else that has a license later? Yes, um, Rocker will be the only uh, premise open till 4.30 in the morning. The one other premise does have a license till 4, um, but it, they got granted that before the Licensing Act came out in 2000, 2003 and they have never ever used it. So these are our concerns that Rocker will be the only premise open till 4.30 in the morning in Ramsgate. Thank okay. you. Um, 
Could the Environmental Health um, Officer please present their case? Thank you. Environmental Health uh, has not objected to this application, um, subject to conditions being attached, which were on the previous license or the current license, and have been in, included in this schedule um, on the application. But that's not because we are not concerned about public nuisance um, from patrons and 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 music, um, but just for a bit of background to explain the conditions that were on the previous license and that we have agreed to. Um, uh, have on this license, if if members are minded to grant consent, it's um, it's environmental health uh, did take a review um, back in two thousand and ten because of noise complaints, and they were received and investigated. The conditions were then attached, and those conditions, the, the, the key one here really is the sound limiter condition, um, but. It is things have changed since 2010 and it's worth reminding, I think, uh, committee members that the Live Music Act has changed things uh, significantly. So that has effectively deregulated uh, live music and recorded music before 11 p.m. So uh, as long as the establishment has a premises license to sell alcohol, has a capacity of less than 500 people, they can play uh, recorded and live music every day from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. And any conditions on the license do not apply unless they've been attached subsequent to a review. Um, I think it's called a suspension 74, but um, uh, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so the conditions that we've agreed that we'll, uh, with, with the applicant require that from 11 p.m., um, all music uh, must be um, secured via a sound limiting device, which has been set by environmental, well, the, the levels are advised by environmental health. Um, uh, and just to explain a bit, I suppose, about the two complaints we took back at the beginning of, uh, well, one was on the 21st of January to, uh, 2020, and the second was in September uh, 14th, uh, 2020 just to explain that uh initially co complainants are given a mechanism to take their complaints forward um, and the complainants didn't do that so without that evidence we cannot corroborate where their their complaint um we notify the the premises of the complaints but we weren't able to get the evidence to confirm or, or not whether the uh, condition was being breached regarding the sound limiter or even get the evidence to justify uh, a subsequent review. So that's just to explain why those conditions were not taken for uh, those complaints were not taken forward. Um, the, uh, but partly the reason for not objecting is the imposition and the, of the sound limiting condition, um, but also um, that with the numerous tens that have been applied for, because we didn't object to those tens, um, in fact, it was by agreement uh, early on to see whether Mr. P Pantelli could um, operate the tens. We could take each one on a case by case uh, basis, and if we got complaints, we could object, um, which we never we never received those complaints relating to the tens. But it is just worth worth mentioning that because we didn't object. That 10 was not subject, those 10s were not subject to a statement of conditions. So their premises license and the conditions that were attached to it were not legally enforceable for the extra hour that was being um, applied for under the 10. Whereas under the new license, should it be granted, those conditions will apply. So actually is an additional safeguarding measure. Um, and I am satisfied by Mr. Pantelli saying that uh, he will not apply for further tens should this license be granted. Um, with regard to the, the, the conditions, um, I just, wh while we're in this uh, format, we have agreed them, but it is worth, again, just just um, mentioning that condition five, which is in the applicant's um, application in uh, the operating schedule, also in Annex three, uh, condition five of the existing license, Condition five states that doors and windows should be kept closed in any event except for access and egress after 2 a.m. until close. Can I suggest we do not include that condition because it actually contradicts the condition above, uh, condition two, which requires windows and doors to be kept closed 
during regulated entertainment. So that's from 11 p.m. So condition five is confusing and not uh, required. Um, and the second uh, condition, which is relates to the sound limiter, it's more or less the same, but it's just been tidied up in accordance with the Institute of Licensing guidance on premises license conditions to read a noise limiting device must be installed and must operate at all times regulated entertainment takes place at the premises. The device must be of a type in a location and set at a level in approved in writing by the council's environmental health officer. So it's very similar, but it's more precise and more enforceable. Um, um, so um, I just wanted to mention that now. So those, those conditions will apply to regulated entertainment from 11 p.m until uh, regulated, re regulated entertainment finishes at four. Um, that's it, thank you. Thank you. Um, does the applicant agent um, have any questions for the environmental health officer? Uh, just, just to clarify, uh, Amanda, you, you're, you are basically, set, you are proposing to amend slightly the conditions in our application to bring them up to date to include the phrases regulated entertainment um which which i can see i can see i can see why you would do that um i'm just looking at nick because obviously this is the first time we've heard that looks all right to me um just brings it up to date uh so yes that's that's basically what you're asking is that right yes please and the removal of condition five which is doors and windows should be kept closed um after 2 a.m. It's not, it's, it's, it contradicts the condition above, which is uh, condition yeah. two, which requires it closed during regulated entertainment from 11. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Um, do the police um, have any questions for the environmental health officer? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, do members of the committee um, have any questions for the environmental health officer? Councillor Hour. Thank you, Chair. Yes, just one question. So I'm a little bit confused. So after 2 a.m., shouldn't be any customer outside? Is everybody going to be inside or what? And all the tables and chairs stays as it is? Could you clarify that, please? Thank you. I, I think that's possibly one for clarification from um, the agent and the applicant and what they were asking for. But as I understand it, the patrons will be able to sit outside until the premises close closes at 4 30 um but please correct me if i'm if i've got that wrong so if that's the uh, case then what happens to the noise poly noise you know to, if people are sitting outside the premises and they're going to be drinking and talking and people will be coming in and out of the premises as well so then how are we going to control the noise that would be for uh, mr pantelli to control that if anybody's um causing a uh, a disturbance. I mean, bearing in mind there is quite a bit of hubbub um, in the when other bars are open prior to that. But Mr. It would fall to Mr. Pantelli um, and his management to um, resolve that. Um, yes, you do need to consider as a committee whether the extra hour that's being applied for is going to impact further on the surrounding. Um, properties included and that needs to take into account the neighboring businesses which is a hotel and there are flats above um, i believe all of the properties along there so that does need to be borne in mind thank you um councillor scobie do you have any um questions no okay thank you um now move on to the summary. Um, Ms. Phillips, Ms. Phillips, can I ask you a question, please? Can you can you um, tell me what the time the time scale is for su for summing up representations? The time scale is five minutes each. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'd, I'd now like to ask each party to sum up and make final representations. Um, so, um, would the police like to sum up? Thank you. Um, summary from us is um, conditions need to be put on the uh, premise license as tomorrow the premises could be sold to another without any conditions. The promotion of the licensing objectives must be priority. 
over the trust in an individual with regards to prevention of crime and disorder and public safety. In Mr Pantelli's submission, he cites that 50% of his customers arrive after over 100 hours. He cites that financially 80% of his income is made on a Friday night and 60%, 66% on a Saturday night. The SIA recommendation for three times SIA still needs to be imposed as a condition. Um, and that's all from me, I think. Can I just uh, ask if there's anything else from my colleagues? No, that's all from the police. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, would the environmental health officer like to sum up? Thank you. Um, just to say that there is, um, of course, a potential for public nuisance from any licensed premises opening to the public until 4.30 a.m. three nights a week, potentially three nights a week. Um, and while there are other licensed premises in the vicinity and the area does have a vibrant nighttime economy, we must safeguard neighbouring dwellings and businesses from a disproportionate and unreasonable disturbance. If members are minded to approve this application, I request the agreed conditions um, with environmental health and the applicant are attached to the licence. Okay, thank, thank you very much. And um, would the um, applicant um, or, or agent like to sum up, please? Um, yes, gladly. In, in no particular um, order. I think the first point I need to make very clear is that we uh, refute this suggestion that there is uh, official guidance from the SIA of 1 to 75 ratio. Uh, I've done hundreds of license applications myself, and I'm sure the police have as well. 1 to 100 is perfectly acceptable ratio, and Nick has proven over the last 15 years that a risk assessed basis is perfectly acceptable as well. So I please must ask you not to deliberate on the basis that 1 to 75 has any official government because as far as I'm concerned that has not been proven today and I'd be the first to hold my hands up if somebody showed me where it was um, but but that's that's a very important point to bear in mind I would point to the the evidence of the last 15 years as to who is best placed to decide um, how many door staff they need be it at three o'clock or at four o'clock um, I regarding uh, the noise issues that have been raised by uh, Amanda. I, I, I again, I, I should point out that um, nobody has objected on, on a noise basis, apart from the police. The police's original concerns did have some uh, um, concerns about noise. So there's no residents, no hotel owner has objected to this application at all. And you, one has to be careful, respectfully, um, of speculating about these things. Uh, the conditions that are going on to the license are in agreement with environmental health and, and really, uh, uh, you know, are any of us able to, to look beyond that unless we are speculating, which is not the purpose of this, uh, this, this hearing. I, I'm also concerned, if I'm absolutely honest, with it's important to investigate all the aspects of an application, but we were pretty much one condition regarding door staff away from reaching a complete, you know, possibly a complete agreement here. Uh, and, and I want to bring us back to what unites us, as it were, as opposed to what divides us. And what unites us is that Nick Pantelli and Rocker is a really good establishment. And what we want to impress upon you in these COVID, you know, these COVID times, as we're just beginning, I hope, to come out of COVID, is that people like Nick, responsible operators like, like Nick, need a bit of a break and i'm not going to be able to prove to you conclusively that legally and evidentially you should grant him a four o'clock and you should grant him a four o'clock without imposing a door staff condition from 1 p.m but if you can't grant that to nick pantelli at rocker then who can you grant it to you've got the, the authorities have got powers of review they wouldn't need them with nick anyway if, if there were some issues if something went wrong then the same conversations that have gone on over the years with Nick would happen again and he'd, he'd fix them. But they, there are those official um, uh, mechanisms for enforcement. So this is, this is a, a, you know, we are imploring you please to, this is where I come back to that point of trust that I made at the start. Yes, there's always going to be concerns. The police, environmental health are always going to look at it from a, the lens of what happens if it goes wrong. But, you know, what happens if it goes right? 
that's 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 where we're coming at it from. We will staff up on door staff when it is needed. That's what we've done before, and that's what we'll do again. And when you're talking about imposing appropriate conditions, which is what you're required to do under the guidance, then we would say the conditions in our application, as drafted, are the appropriate conditions to grant. And and thank you very much for listening, uh, you know, so carefully to all the arguments. Um, and I don't think Nick's allowed to say anything, but uh, hopefully I've said everything he wanted me to say. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, the members of the subcommittee will now leave the meeting along with the council's legal representative to deliberate this matter in private. We shall resume here to deliver a verdict in 30 minutes time. Whilst we leave the meeting, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer to explain the retiring process. Thank you, Jen. See you in 30 minutes. Absolutely. So we'll we meet back here in 30 minutes time. So should we... Now. Just gone 10 past. So should we say 22? 20, 20 to 12, we'll meet back here. Use the same link as we've used to get into this meeting.
the, the pool. We're just going to be five more minutes in the uh, in the little private session we've got as a, an update for you for you guys. James, can't hear you on mute.
I think we're nearly there, people. Um, it's just another couple of minutes for us, and then we'll all be back into this room. Okay. Hi, James. Can you let let me know when everyone's present? Yeah. Is uh, is everyone here? That's excellent. Hello, Mr. Grimsey. Okay. Yeah. People are coming. Back to life, that's it, Sifa. So, everyone? Uh, I think so, yes. Um, is Councillor Arrow uh, here? Councillor Arrow is in, one second. Just finding the link, I expect. Have you found her, James? Not yet. <laughs> Is she still in the other meeting room? 
I don't know. I'll go back in. She's here now. Hi, Councillor. Yeah. Is that all of us? Yes. Okay, yeah, I think that's all of us. I'm just going to remove um, uh, Mr. Grimsey. You're in twice, so I'm going to take out one of your um, accesses. Okay, I think we should all be good now. Okay, that's great. Um, I'd like, I'd now like to invite um, Ms. Phillips, um, the principal litigation sister, to read a summary of the subcommittee's determination. Thank you. Um, before I read the um, decision, um, the committee just wanted everyone to know that it is the first time that we've considered. Um, an application of this nature in the particular area and due consideration was given to the um, to the times that we're living in in terms of the pandemic um, etc and the desire to encourage businesses and to move forward especially as we go um, so one, one into second, the Jennifer, um, <laughs> I'm not sure that the applicant solicitors available I, I used it twice at the meeting and I removed one of them but I want to make sure that he can hear us okay I uh, that's good. I do apologise. Okay. I have my camera flashed off on this one. So no, no problem. So that, that's all good. I think we're okay now. Apologies for the interruption. That's fine. And so, having said that, it is the application in the in the application of Rocket Limited of sixty four Parade Ramsgate Kent CT eleven eight L M for a premises license in respect of the same um, address. It is the decision of the license. And sub district council to grant the new premises license in the application made um, by Rocker Limited, but subject to the condition that for the extra operating hour granted, um, Rocker use an extra security staff to the front of the premises. This will be subject to a review after 12 months from the date of the grant of this license. Thank that's you. The decision that the Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank that, concludes, that concludes the business for this meeting of the licensing subcommittee.